congrats uh, to all you guys. Um, thank you guys for, for putting in the, the nominations. I think we we're all very happy with, with what we got from our end. And you guys are awesome. You did, did, a, did a great job. And yeah, so we'll, I'll give it pretty open. You guys can ask me uh, any questions you have, whatever's on uh, your mind, soccer related, whatever it may be. And yeah, let's just get this, get this ball rolling. Um, so congratulations on winning the tournament again. Thank you. Now, during COVID, how did you stay motivated? That's a, that's a great question. Um, it was tough, but, uh, we're actually very lucky to have a very good, uh, coaching staff and, and backroom staff at our team. And, and they did a lot for us to make sure that everyone was, was, uh, was staying fit. So we have these heart rate monitors that track all of our, our fitness and they would put together a plan and then we started actually doing workouts over zoom just like this so we used our our trainer would run uh would run a workout and we'd have to do either yoga or all of these little workouts because they give us uh, our equipment from our gym in the stadium and they divided it all up so everyone had stuff at their home put together a workout plan and then we'd go for runs outside and yeah, we just we just kept doing that. Obviously, it was, it's it's a little difficult, uh, difficult and, and pretty boring when you're practicing on your own every single day. But we all knew how important it was to to stay fit for for whenever that time came that we were able to come back on the field. So yeah, just did a, a lot of stuff on our own, a lot of a lot of workouts, a lot of stuff with the ball. So we'd have to go to a park, and and they they created all these little drills for us that we would be doing. So it was. It was funny. It was back like when I was uh, when I was a kid, like your guys' age, and, and just working on uh, working on all my technique and, and staying fit. Great question. Anyone else? Just feel free. To... Kyle. Yeah. Uh, Aiden wanted to ask you a question. When you were everybody's age that won the captain's award, mm -hmm. uh, trying to figure out which direction to go on in the future, right? Uh, staying in clubs or going into an academy or or going through OPDL or playing you know regional and things like that or just staying in house league and then going through high school and looking that way uh, what options were there for you at that time well the the landscape of the of all of you soccer when I was coming up was a little different than it is now we didn't necessarily have all of the academy systems and and what it's become now so I Grew up playing for for my local uh, local team in Oak Hill. We were actually called Oak Hill Blue Stars. So it was just uh, it was the rep league, and we came up playing into the OISL, and that's pretty much all we knew at the time. And it was just going there. And luckily, we had a very competitive uh, competitive team. Again, we had a great coach who would always get us into uh, tournaments. Sometimes we'd go down south and and play uh, some American teams playing those tournaments like that. And and as I get, uh, got a little bit older, there was things like the provincial team, the, the youth national team, where those kind of became my next goals to, to keep going. Um, around 14 is when I actually met our coach now, Bobby Smirniotis, and he was actually running Sigma at the time. And I got connected with him, and that kind of just worked out. I think that kind of just came to fruition. It was, it was obviously very tough because that's when they were very, just starting the academy system. So I actually – it was a little difficult and it was a hard sell. I stepped away from what everyone knew in terms of the OISL and following that route, okay. just because I had a lot of trust in Bobby and kind of what he was preaching in terms of my development, uh, working on my technique and all, and all those things. And then, um, yeah, I actually, I had a chance to go over to Europe. So we, that first Sigma team, we had a sort of a select team. So we, again, we, it was guys all over the GTA. Um, we started, practicing however many times a week it was and then we went on to a little bit of a showcase in Europe we actually went to Holland um we played a lot of the clubs there one of them ended up being Ajax and we beat Ajax three nothing no and nice after after that uh sort of tournament or showcase thing that we did played all those games they asked me to stay and go on a, a little bit of a trial period with the with the team okay so I got to stay it was about two weeks and went through all the training and everything went well. And then uh, on the last day, they're like, so you're coming back. And I, I went back home, um, fully uprooted my life, and I moved to Holland. Um, some things that didn't work out in the end, I ended up going for about seven months, came back, and 
at that point, that's when the, all the academies were starting to pick up uh, a little bit more steam and kind of get like they're playing in leagues and things like that. Our Sigma team started playing in a men's league. So we had guys about 50, 15, 16, 17. We were playing with men. They took over Olympic flame to, to get us allowed to play into these competitions. And then it was, all right, what's the next step? And we had a, a lot of help. They had a lot of resources that allowed U.S. coaches to come and watch us play. They put on some tournaments. They did some showcase tournaments, which are still running to this day. And it was, all right, this is, this is going to be the avenue that I'm going to follow now. And I ended up going uh, to Boston College on a scholarship. And that was uh, the pathway that ended up working out for me. And it was, at the time, it was always just, how can I get in to continue to, to give myself to the opportunity to make my dream come true, which was to play professional soccer. And yeah, I ended up going to Boston College. I went for, I was there for all four years. And my last year I ended up going, uh, I got picked to go to the MLS Combine. And in that, I ended up having a, a very good combine, and I actually ended up getting drafted uh, third overall by Toronto FC. Cool. And that's when this whole professional journey began. So oh, it, it's, it's tough. The, the landscape has definitely changed in terms of what you guys have and the resources you guys have in the leagues and you can follow. At your age, I think the biggest thing is there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's, it's trying to obviously play against the best competition you can but just furthering your development, however that may be. Because there's no, the beauty about soccer is there's no right or wrong way to do any of this. It's just keep going, keep developing, keep working on the simple stuff and, and kind of keep pushing yourself to get to that higher level, whatever that level may be for, for each individual. Well, thanks for sharing for us. I know it's a little uh, confusing and overwhelming for the young players nowadays and uh, trying to yeah. figure out which route to go and they go to different clubs or academies for tryouts or assessments or evaluations and just trying to figure out what works best for them personally and for their skill set as well too. Absolutely I, I think that is something that I think we we're starting to hear a lot more in terms of the uh, youth landscape whereas a lot of people just don't know the the best best pathway to follow to to get you to your end goal and I think that's something that's on the responsibility of the CSA to kind of clear up so we can make it a little bit more distinct, especially with now having the CPL in, yeah. in uh, around and we have professional soccer now in our own backyard and you can kind of see the end game now. Whereas, for example, when I was coming up, there was no local professional soccer. No. EFC started when I was about 17. No one really knew what it was and, and you didn't really follow it the way that we all, we all do now but it's grown to such a level in this country. I think we need to do a better job of cleaning up that pipeline. So it's A to B is a little bit more concise and we keep going, but you touched on it there. It's, it's being able to reflect in terms of where you are individually in your growth and how do you just continue, continue to go pushing yourself to get to the, the next level. Yeah. Because I find that like at this age group too, like 11, 12, 13, everybody's at a different growth rate. So mm -hmm. there's some kids that are like five, eight already. And then there's some that are still at, you know, four, six, right. But they're going toe to toe on the pitch and it gets a little daunting or frustrating at times. And then you're trying to figure out the evaluators or the coaches or whatever in the clubs and academies, what they're thinking and what they're trying to approach. Um, Aiden had a question in regards to playing in clubs or academies that are a pool or a set team, is there an advantage or a disadvantage from your standpoint on it? Um, no, it's, it's tough. Uh, I, again, um, it, it really depend, uh, depends on the individual and where you are with your growth. If, if it's a, a situation that's going to continuously or continually test you day in and day out or week in and week out, whatever that may be, then I think it's always going to be a good situation because that's the only way I think you keep progressing is if, if you're getting that, that competition within that's, that's healthy. So again, that's on the, the responsibility of the coaching staffs there to make it a very positive and uh, competitive environment. But if you can get in those environments, I think that's what allows you to, to make the next jump and, and playing in those teams, whether it's a select team and you're in this uh, a big pool, doesn't always work out for people. If I, if I use myself as an example, I started playing with the provincial team when I was around uh, U13, U14. And you'd go in and, and you're playing and, and you're doing these training sessions a few times a week and there's a pool of 40 kids, whatever it may be, you're split into two teams. And funny enough, I was never ever picked for the first team because I was always too small. 
I didn't get my growth spurt until I went to, to college and I came back from my first year. Oh, okay. So I was always a, a small guy and, and uh, I know that experience all too well. And, and for me at that time, I hated it. I, I, had, I had a lot of difficulty going to practice, staying motivated just because I felt like I wasn't, one, I, I felt like I was kind of pushed off to the side and, and two, it was kind of just, this isn't what I expected it to be. I actually stepped away from that. I just kept playing with my, my club team, Oakville, and I started to just fall back in love with the game. And then around that time is coincidentally when I actually got introduced to, to Bobby and, and we started Sigma and that whole situation just worked perfectly for me. And it was exactly what I needed at that time for my development. So it's, there's, and when I came up, everyone was saying, okay, you have to go through the, the youth national team or the provincial teams and all that stuff. But for me, that didn't work. That was, that was, didn't really provide me the, the environment to continue to grow as a player and as an individual. And when I stepped away from that, I think I was able to see that. And that was the first, I think, time where I actually had to, to kind of start reflecting on what I was doing, where I was finding the enjoyment and how I can step away and then continue to, to grow in this game. And, and looking back on it now, it's, it was a great decision, but obviously it was a, a decision that was very tough at the time. Okay, thanks for sharing with us because uh, I can see that that's a, a strong point in everybody's minds these days right now with the current landscape with what's going on in the world, but also too with how academies and clubs and now with CPL and there's more of a, an awareness of soccer in Canada too. So you've got more people in it wanting it so there's more competition I'm trying to keep the youth motivated on top of everything else that's going on so it was great for sharing thanks for that it's a it's definitely a difficult time but in these times if you guys can keep finding ways to get yourself motivated and, and work on your individual skills these are the simple skill sets that allow you to, to progress when you play with with uh with other players it's the, the funny thing is, is me and a, a teammate, David Edgar, we actually speak about this all the time, is some of the basics that you get to a professional level and it kind of gets forgotten, but those are the little drills that you need to do to keep yourself sharp, to keep getting better and better, to allow you to, to get better at the more complicated situations in a game. But if you take away from those simple basics, it's everything else becomes so much difficult. Like if I, again, using myself as an example, I've never been the fastest guy on the team ever. And the only reason that I have success is because I do stuff where I can, where I try and I get better with my passing or I get better with the way I read the game to allow myself to play a little bit faster when I'm not going to get into a foot race with someone else. So it's right. finding those little things that separate you at an early age are definitely important. And then just make those things the, the best where they become automatic. So if it's shooting with your, your weak foot or, or crossing or dribbling through cones, whatever it may be, work on those little things to continually get better because you're always going to be able to get better at those. You can always make them half a second faster, everything a little bit cleaner, all those little stuff. And if you get that mindset at an earlier age, it's only going to benefit you down the road on and off the field in terms of what you want to get done and, and what you want to achieve. Perfect. Thanks for sharing. That's excellent. No problem. He told ya. <laughs> <laughs> that knows something sometimes, you know, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, but you know, they know everything, so. Yeah. Does anyone else? I'll let somebody else ask some questions now. I'm feeling the show here. I would love to ask a question. Go for um, it. How was it like playing in Holland? Like when you came back, was there much of like a difference? Because I know the Premier League is like very fast, so I was wondering. The the biggest difference I found right away was just the speed in in which they all play at, and and that was something I had to get used to right away when I got there. But when I came back, I felt like I had such an advantage because I was, had that experience. So it was, how do you continually raise your game to that level that you now have been in uh, privy to, to experience and don't let it drop and almost push other teammates that you have to reach that in such a positive way because it's only going to benefit them. So coming back, it was, it was kind of my first experience in terms of how can I be a leader every day in and day out and, and use my, the, the experience that I just had overseas in Holland to come back and kind of push guys and show them that kids our age over there are doing this and why can't we? So it's, it's just little simple things like that that I think were the biggest difference. But again, they just had the, they've had that foundation for so long, whereas even right now, soccer still is so new in our country that we don't have the framework for all of that. But now when, with something like Forge and the CPL is, is we see that landscape early on and we continually raise the bar and keep pushing ourselves and, 
and keep going to to improve in, in that sense and kind of make everyone better around us. But that was a that was definitely a big one. The speed and, and the kind of physicality at that age at, at what they were doing versus what I was used to and in my experience leading up to it. Um, I had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so like now as like a captain, like what is like the most important thing that you think that you like do? For me, it's something that I try and do is I can't ask anyone on our team to do something that I'm not comfortable doing or if I'm not willing to put myself out there and, and kind of lead by example. I'm, I'm never really going to be the most raw, raw motivational guy. That's just who I am as a person. I'm a little shy and I'm not always the, the one speaking in a room. So for me, it's day in and day out. How do I continuously push these guys leading by example in terms of taking care of everything I can in terms of my fitness, the way I'm eating, my nutrition, taking care of my body so that I'm able to play day in and day out and hope that me doing all those right things is other guys are going to see that and try and push themselves and hold themselves to that level and that accountability and, and just doing that day in and, and, and day out. It's a great question. I have a question. Um, how does it feel to have your old coach coach you as a professional now? <laughs> it's a, uh, it's good. I think me and uh, me and Coach Bobby, we've always had a, a great relationship. He's been something of a mentor to me. When I was first breaking in and, and playing my first uh, professional seasons, he was someone I always looked to for, for advice, and, and he was always very open and honest with me in terms of my performance and what he saw versus what I could potentially do better. So already having that relationship and, and knowing the way that he views the game is very similar to the way that I view the game. And so I think when the opportunity came up, it was, it was always going to be a, a simple, a simple yes or an easy yes, because he was always someone that I wanted to play for. I have a lot of respect for him and, and how he conducts his business and, and the way he sets up a team. So I was, it was an opportunity that I didn't want to miss. And I think it's so far, it's been good. I think we've been lucky enough to, to win a couple championships. So I'm going to say it, uh, it's very positive and it's worked out to, to this day. Anyone else got anything? How did it yes. Feel? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, do you ever think that there'll be a women's um, Premier League in Canada? Yeah, I think uh, I actually I actually do. Um, the success that our women's national team have has, has been unbelievable. And I think uh, women's soccer in this country is growing and they're, they're getting the respect they deserve. And I think it's only going to... It's only it's going to take time, but I think it is something that I, I hope or I believe is is kind of working in the in the back room to to make this thing happen. Because if we can get that as well, it's it's only going to help them at that national level where they've been so successful. But I think it'll allow them to make that jump if if we can bring that here in Canada and, and keep giving young girls the opportunity to keep uh, playing professional sports. So I have a I, I believe that it's it's kind of a work in progress, and I'm I'm very hopeful that that's something that uh, that'll happen in the near future. How did it feel playing the games with like no one in the stands? Because I kind of miss going to the games as well. But like, how did that feel? Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it was different for sure. Um, they did a, a pretty good job of making that cool little CGI stadium, which was nice. But nothing can beat uh, playing in front of uh, all your fans who are who are cheering you on and supporting you. So I think it was a quick adjustment, but it was. Uh, for us, it was, it was a cool little learning experience because you had that unique opportunity to hear everyone and, and hear what everyone's, what everyone's saying, what other teams, the way they kind of coach and, and motivate within. And then it's just, it, it allows us that, that opportunity to communicate a little better because when you add in a ton of fans and there's a lot of noise, it's hard to communicate, uh, communicate with your teammates and make sure everyone's on the same page. So this was, this was something that actually was a, it worked for a benefit for us. Obviously it's, it's, as I said, it's much easier to do that. And, Again, it's it, it kind of you feel like you're going back to, to when you're a kid, and, and all it is, is is about playing the game. All the other stuff that's obviously very exciting when you when you get older and, and you play at a higher level in terms of having fans and and playing in these awesome stadiums. But if for us, it was just take all that away and, and kind of just focus on the game and, and what we were doing, and it brings us right back to the basics of it and, and why we love this game. Anyone else? I have a question. 
Yeah. Um, did you play a different position as a kid? Or? Uh, no, I've always really just played uh, played midfield. I've played a few different positions, whether I was uh, a defending mid or a holding mid, trying to play a little deeper. But uh, defensive isn't necessarily my strong point, so I always like to go forward and, and try and try and set up some goals and get some goals myself and, and, and have fun attacking. But I've played all around the midfield, whether it's on the outside of the, or, or either outside or anywhere in the middle. But I'm kind of st- I'm kind of stuck in there. Thank you. No worries. Um, when you played your first professional game, like what was going through your mind, like when you were preparing and even like during the game? I think in the in the lead up, it, it all just felt so surreal. And I don't think until after the fact that I was really able to to kind of reflect on it and 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 see how I really felt about it. It was kind of just everything was happening so fast, and you get picked in the team, and and before you know it, you're you're kind of walking out onto the field and you're like, oh wow, this is really happening. My dreams, uh, my dreams since I was a kid are coming true. But uh, I think after the fact, it was it was just an unbelievable experience. Obviously, it's it's something that was always a lifelong goal of mine to to reach that level, and I was so happy and just proud of of what I'd done to to that point to get there. And then it was okay. How do we just how do we keep going? So how do I keep developing? And now that's done. So that's time to set some new goals and and work towards making those happen. But it was uh, it was an awesome feeling. It was very very surreal for sure. Any others? I have another one. <laughs> you can call it. Okay. Um, how are you guys preparing to verse Toronto FC? Yeah, it's uh it's, that'd be so wicked. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be uh it's definitely gonna be tough. Obviously right now we, we're actually working towards playing these CONCACAF games, so that's the one that's immediately in the future. Um, and again, we're going to have to use these because it's going to be very tough competition. We're playing away from home, so you never really know what it's going to be like. There's all that. Obviously, there still won't be any fans, which, again, kind of helps us because sometimes you play in those stadiums and the atmosphere is unbelievable and it's a little intimidating. But, uh, yeah, we're just trying to use those games to, to keep fit and keep everyone sharp. So when that time comes, we play against TFC. I think everyone's going to be ready. Um, we're going to have to trust the uh, the coaching staff to give us all the information we need to play them and I think for a game like that it's just about managing uh, everyone's emotions and making sure we're all on the right on the same page and just guys being able to go out there and showcase their talent and, and show what they have show what they can do against uh, an opponent like that who's so good and they have so much talent across the board it's this is kind of what I spoke about earlier it's you always want to kind of test yourself against the best and and this is an opportunity to do that and for us to be in this position in the second year is, is unbelievable. And I think everyone's very excited about that game and, and hopefully we can make it happen. What was going through your mind when you won the CPL for the second time in a row? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Back back. Thank you. Um, there was so many emotions. I think the nature of the tournament was uh it was so intense and there were so many games in such a short period of time honestly I think once the final whistle went my whole body just got sore and I felt pain for the first time in in a month it was just relief and exhaustion and we're just so happy that that I think uh we were able to to reach our goal and that we set out before before we went down it was just just pure happiness I think it's 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 not something that happens too often obviously it's funny to say that when we've won two two years in a row but before this it's it's these finals don't come around too often the older you get and and the higher levels you play it's it's tough to keep winning so I think we were just so excited that we were able to reach our goal as a team and it was just pure happiness I have a question Mm -hmm. How does, what's the team spirit like after you won the second championship? It's the best. There's a, it's hard to replicate that feeling of, of winning. Um, everyone is just so excited. We, we have a great group where we all get along. We're lucky enough that everyone in the locker room gets along with everyone else, which is, which is tough to happen, I think, at, a, at higher levels. But for whatever reason, this group of guys, we all get along great, and it's, and it's awesome. So when you get a moment like that and you, you can share it together, it's, it's unbelievable. And now this is something that's going to bond us as, as teammates and as friends for, forever. Um, 
something like last year winning the first tournament or the first league in a CPL history is something that forever we've made we've kind of made history in Canada in terms of what we're trying to achieve as as a club as a country with this league and it's something that's going to keep this group of group of guys together forever so hopefully in 10 15 years down the road the the club will kind of bring us all back and, and maybe celebrate us one time at a at a halftime or something like that when we're all retired and washed up so we'll see what uh we'll see what happens but it's it's pretty much the best feeling i've uh, i've had in this sport so it's awesome How do you deal with defeat as a captain? That is that is a great question. Um, I think the most important thing to do is is just really be able to to reflect on on what has happened and and where you can make improvements to keep going and and turn that loss, that awful feeling that you get whenever you lose, and turn it into a positive and make it a learning experience. So one, you have that feeling that you obviously don't want to have again. But the nature of sport, there's always going to be a winner and a loser. So how do you manage those emotions to keep doing what you're doing and kind of get back up the next day and, and trust the process and keep doing all that hard work you're doing to get you to that position and figure out what went wrong on that day? Um, a big thing that we have to our disposal is we have a lot of video on our, on our, on our games and practices and we're able to look at real examples of what had, what had happened and where did we kind of go wrong in the game plan of, of that day. And then just honestly, just keep going. Obviously, you have to have a little bit of a short memory. You can't get too down on yourself because these things happen. As I said, there's always going to be a winner and a loser. So it's being able to manage those emotions and, and use it as a motivation to, to, to keep going and, and keep working towards the, the positive outcome. And as you, as you get going, there's always going to, be, uh, there's going to be tough losses. Like this year when we had that, that loss against York, obviously we were very disappointed. And you're in a tournament-style format like this it's very easy to just get down on yourself and be like, oh, we're doing this wrong or this was happening wrong. And you kind of, you lose your confidence and you lose all that belief that you have in yourself that makes you so good and successful. But you kind of just got to put all those emotions away, package them all up, be able to look and learn at, at what happened in that game. And again, as I said, use it as a positive and, and just make sure you can right those wrongs the next day. When you were younger, you mentioned like, how you kind of felt like uh, left aside or like, yeah. Um, how did you stay like motivated and positive during that time? That was a, uh, that was definitely a very difficult time. Um, I, I was able to, to lean on someone like my, uh, my mom and my dad for, for their experience, um, a little bit of advice on how I should handle the situation. Kind of just went back to, to enjoying the game of soccer that I, that I loved so much before it. And, and really just get back to what made me happy. And at that time, it was stepping away from that team, which for me was very difficult to do because as everyone said, that was the level that you need to be playing at if you want to keep going in this game. So it was almost how do I take one step away, a step backwards to go two forwards. And that was just something I was able to do because of my support system in terms of my family or my older brother who also played soccer and just being able to speak and, and be open with them about what I was feeling and and how can I actively make this better? And it was just, just had to trust the, trust what they were saying, take their advice, be a little open to all that, and just kind of go back to enjoying the game and, and working hard. After your career, do you think you're going to go to be a coach? That's actually something I would really like to do. Um, I'm currently working on all my, my coaching licenses right now, so when I'm done, hopefully I can get right into it and, and work towards that. Um, I just love this game so much. I know it's something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, I really enjoy that side of it and, and the technical and tactical stuff and breaking down opponents and, and all that. And I think if, if I'm a coach, uh, it gives me another opportunity to stay in this game that I, that I love so much. And it's basically been everything I know my entire life. So yeah, I would ideally like to like to make that happen. So we'll see how that goes. Do you think you'll end up ever being one of our coaches? Might. You never know. We'll have to see what, the, what old Forge is working out. I'll ask a couple questions. Maybe we can pull some strings. Who knows? Do you think Forge will ever have an academy? Yeah, I think that's a, that is something that is in the, in the game plan for sure. I think that is a massive part of uh, – 
how we continue to grow this game. When you have a professional team with an academy where you can go from, where you can start in under nine and work your way up and, and see the end goal, it's massive. And I think that's a, that is the direction we're going. And I think we'll see that, see that in the not so uh, distant future. Hopefully you guys can all be playing for Forge's Academy, working towards. Would you would you coach at the, the Forge Academy or would you go yeah, out? I would love to. I think if that was uh, something and there was an opportunity there and, and we kind of set that in place, I think that'd be a great, great place for, for me to start working on uh, on my coaching side of things and, and keep growing that way as a coach. Obviously, it's hard to just jump right into the, the professional game. I think you need that experience and. There's something so valuable about working with kids because the one thing they are is they're brutally honest, which is awesome. And you kind of get figure out a way to get your voice as, as a coach so you can get your message across and work on your communication skills in, in that sense. So it's if that was a thing, absolutely, it would be a, an opportunity I'd jump at. Um, as being a professional soccer player, what charities do you support? Um. I've, I, this is a big thing that, that made me kind of start this this captain's award. Um, obviously, being in the position that I've am, I've, I've always wanted to to give back. But in in my career, I've kind of been bouncing around and never really had some uh, one spot that I've been in. So the major thing I wanted to do was set some, set something up where we can work with kids and and make sure kids have the opportunity to to play in this game because I think sports is so valuable for young kids coming up and. It, it shows you so much about who you are as a person you can grow as an individual and teaches us so much about life that I don't think we really realize and it sets kids up for, for success, whatever that may be, whether it's in the, in the sport or if it gives them the opportunity to, to work towards going to school and help them uh, another avenue to get a degree. And that's been a big one. Um, I've, throughout my career, I've always been able to have the opportunity to go to sick kids and, and those are always very humbling experiences just because it's, it's just always so sad, but to see the strength that these, some of these kids have, it's, it's unbelievable. And it keeps you a little grounded and, and know, know how lucky you are to, to be in the position that I am. So it's, again, as I said, this, this is a reason I wanted to start this award and hopefully we can keep growing this thing and, and keep helping out the, the kids in Hamilton. What age should you start playing soccer at? Very tough question. I, honestly, I don't think there is a, a right or wrong answer to that. Um, obviously, it's if you get into it and it's, it's something you want to do at a young age, I, think you, I don't think there is a, a set time. It's just start going. For me, I was, uh, as I said, I have an older brother. So by the time I could walk, he was already going to games and I was kind of just following him around, kicking a ball around. And, and I was lucky enough to start right away. Um, but I've also known, known kids who didn't start playing competitive soccer until they were 11, 12 years old and they're playing professional soccer at this time. So it's, it's, it's one of those ones where I think it just depends on the individual and, and what works for you and, and how you get involved in the game and how you keep progressing. But I don't think there's a, a set age where you have to, to start playing soccer to, to get into that, that level you want to achieve. Anyone else? Is that it? Well, if that's it, guys. Um, yeah, thank you guys for, for taking the time to get on this uh, this call with me. Obviously, I wish we could have met at the at the stadium and given you guys a tour, but I believe that's something that will will be happening next year. So we'll be able to show you guys where. Uh, how we how we train, what our locker room looks like, how we prepare for a game, and get you guys down there to back at Tim Hortons Field to to watch a game and, and cheer us on and, and and see us get another win, which is which is going to be awesome. But for now, as I said, thank you so much. It's it's been a pleasure to meet you guys. Thank you for participating in this. It, it means a lot to me. Um, it is our first year, so it, it was a little small, and obviously the nature of of the the year that we've had with with COVID and everything, but. I think we're going to continue to grow this. So um, thank you guys so much for your support and support and forge and, and keep going in, uh, in your journeys. You guys keep, uh, keep developing and, and working hard. Thank you for the words of wisdom and uh, motivation and uh, the, the get up and the go for these young fellows and girls, right? You know? I, hope, uh, I hope some of it made some sense, guys. <laughs>
Uh, thanks for uh, doing everything that you've done for the community and for Forge and coming back to your homegrown roots within your neighborhood, right? And all the best to you and your teammates and your family as well. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for the award and the program that Forge has put out as well, too. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Uh, is it okay if Aiden like sticks his face beside the computer and takes a picture? Do it. <laughs> Yeah, let me get the camera ready here. There are a couple of thumbs up, everyone. Everyone's got to be. All right, here we go. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. It was nice meeting you, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to meet you all in person very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you guys. Thank you. Good luck. We are for the mighty, mighty, mighty.